Hawaii time, uh, which is the time we're observing on the ship, even though we're not necessarily in that <laughs> we're time far, zone. far away. Um, we will then, uh, since the weather seems to be cooperating and uh, not as windy and strong back in the monument, we're going to start heading south again, back into the Papahanaumoa Kuakea Marine National Monument and uh, transiting over to the Solo Day Seamount, which is just on the inside of the monument boundary. We think that transit will be about eight hours. Uh, I, I need to confirm that with our mapping coordinator. But if that's correct, then hopefully we'll be starting a next dive at 4 p.m. Hawaii time today. Uh, so at about 10 hours from now. And uh, diving on the southwest side of Solo Day Seamount on a ridge there. Um, it might be a bit longer of a transit than we have done on our recent dives. Um, maybe a three kilometer so I'll transit. I'll hold it for a second. Mm. I'll, I'll show you so a practice yeah. move. It might yeah. be a 20 or 24 hour dive. You want to stow that in the little holder first before moving it? Because remember, if this falls and bumps the halt button, then it's a live arm and floppy. Oh, God, that's. So you want to yep. make sure it's nice and secure. No live floppy arms. No. So. Uh, let's see if I can think of the, what do I want to do here? So. Oh. Hmm. It's hard with that. <laughs> only one, only a couple joints going here. So what am I trying to do here? Okay, here's a good one for you. So you see how there's the Nautilus sticker right yeah. on the flat face there? And it's like pretty much perpendicular to the camera right now? Yes. But if I wrist up, now it's not no longer perpendicular. Okay. And of course, like, uh, even that isn't quite perpendicular. But see as you move how it kind of changes its angle there. Yeah. So see if you can move the jaws and counteract for that. And just keep that sticker facing the camera? Yeah, as much as you can. Okay. Well, of course, when you're over here, it's not going to do that. But, like, then when you come down, it's already showing you. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, I know what you're so saying. Here, it's not quite square. Anyway. Okay. Try it. That's kind of like what you would do if you were looking at a sample and trying to hold it in front of the camera. Yeah, and it gets more... Okay. This is kind of a weird one. It gets more obvious when you're moving the shoulder and elbow at the same time, but it's something. Yeah. Hello. Uh, a tight shot? You oh, might have to, might have to move I don't it. mind. Yeah, you might have to move it over here, but sure. Yeah. Oh, oh, on this one. Oh, sure. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Just miss my... 4 a.m. tired face. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, unhalting. And let me practice that little. Ooh. So that is also proportional. So obviously you saw as you're moving the wrist pitch and yaw around, if you move it fast, the arm moves fast. If you move it slow, the arm moves slow. That's the same with the rocker there. So if okay. you want to do a small movement, you don't need to just hit it quickly. You just want to push it gently so exactly like you're doing there that's an easy one to forget okay Right. If you're just tuning in, you can sort of get a close up of the front row and Ashton taking control <laughs> of the <laughs> heart controls. If you're just interested and wondering how what's happening on satellite feed one uh, corresponds to actual movements. So 
I hope, Enjoying. It's a, <laughs> I hope it's a nice tight shot, Stephen, so they don't see my very concentrated face over here. It's, <laughs> just, it's, just, it's your hands. just your hands. Good. Good. <laughs> this is a very <laughs> you agree. unnatural movement. <laughs> Looks awesome, though. Okay, so. Ooh. <laughs> How long did it take for this to become like second nature for you, Trevor? I have over a hundred hours using it. Do you have like an ROV log book that do, you log yeah. all this in? Yeah. Oh, do they make those or did you have to like make one up yourself? Well, they make one, but really? I made one up myself because I don't didn't want to do the whole industry standard thing. <laughs> We can totally talk log books when we have some uh, shop time. Cool. Somebody's wondering what's the sunrise like out on the Nautilus. It's Is the sun up yet? Dark. It's still dark. <laughs> I think it's yeah. Yeah. not White sunny here yet, guys. <laughs> I was wondering the same thing. Then I went outside <laughs> and I was like, Ooh. I was like, I have not yet. No way of knowing. I've not been outside. <laughs> there is the, the uh, aft deck camera on the far right over there. Oh. Yep, yep still dark. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> halt. Halted. Getting a snack. <laughs> Thank you. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Somebody's wondering, is there any difference when manipulating the craft arm in and out of the water? In and out of the water? That was mm -hmm. the question? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. No. No, is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I would say the big difference is having Hercules landed or not, because uh, the manipulator can reach much below Herc's base. So if it's on the deck, it can only reach down to the deck. But if you're in the mid-water, in the water column, you can reach well below. That would be the biggest difference. This is why we do our first uh, training session, to get people used to using the manip. We do that on the ascent, because there's less stuff to hit. So you can get kind of more practice of full range right. of motion and fewer consequences and more uh, realistic training too. And if I break it, <laughs> we're right. already on the way up. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to break it. I'm not going to break it. That's <laughs> Mhm. Mm <laughs> Ah, the script block's a little, uh... Hey, Trevor, your front row. Hello. Um, this is, our, I think, our first watch where we're coming up to breakfast. What is yeah. this, what are, you, what are the pilots and the ROV team generally do? Do you get your breakfast after the ROV comes up? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There was a good quote from Chris Chris Kelly last year, and he's, he's someone opened the door at like seven twenty.
twenty or something, and he's like, "Oh, here's breakfast relief." Uh huh. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, man, we don't do that. We just finish <laughs> our watch and then go eat breakfast. Breakfast relief. He was so used to the dinner relief where people yeah. come and. Why doesn't dinner start at five thirty? <laughs> Instead of five, I think it's mainly Such to give the give the cooks a uh, longer night off. Yeah. Because if oh they're yeah. working yeah. five thirty to six thirty, yeah. then they got to clean up after and be down in the in the galley at five a.m. Right. So it's a long day. Makes sense. Well, I mean, we can scarf our lunch breakfast down while they're recovering. Oh, that's true. I need to practice that a uh, little wrist fling you do when you're like, I don't want this rock anymore. <laughs> Yeah, we we did that's that. That's what move. it was. You gotta time like it with that. the jaw open too. That's key. <laughs> <laughs> when I was learning I definitely did the swing and then dropped the rock. <laughs> Very embarrassing. That's like but how I look when I'm trying to use a rope swing. <laughs> <laughs> you swing out to the end and then drop after and you that, swung back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, wait, I timed this wrong. So it's like, all right, I've been down to pick something up. <laughs> delicate timing situation. Lock it in. No. Uh, just barely, Annabelle. We look at it. <laughs> we don't like it. I love the narration. <laughs> <laughs> this is complicated. I'll come down there, Annabelle. Also, I love, I love the, uh, we're looking at it, but instead of a nice slow turn, it's more of a centrifuge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're looking at it more slowly. Really inspect it from all angles. See, it's really intuitive to want to tap it to go slow, but yeah, it, you got to break that habit. It's a, a gentle a, hold. Yeah, it is a tough habit to break. And in real life, I'm like T-Rex arming over here. <laughs> yeah, so you're all right now. Your left hand is all bent in. It's you can whack. you can halt and re-index and get more comfortable. I that's encouraged go. all the time. That's that's the key. Is is um, the controller does not have to match the remote. You can it just can be pause and make it ergonomic. Make it ergonomic. Make it so you're able to move the way you want. And if you're about to do a one big move, you want to think ahead and like, how do I plan ahead for that? If I'm swinging the whole manip over this way, I'm going to start far left on the controller. Okay. Diane, how many samples did we take this, this go round? That's a great question, Shelby. Uh, let me do some really quick math. Yeah, sure. Go right ahead. Looks like we have 17 samples. Um, oh, nice. Nice collection. Five rocks for Val, who's doing the um, geological uh, time stamp of seamounts, trying mm -hmm. to figure out sort of the origin and when they all formed. We've got two rocks for Beth with the microbial analysis mm -hmm. and some pairings with water samples. Then we have Look at that thing six eDNA samples. Nice. Uh, so that's that environmental DNA to sort of characterize the fauna mm -hmm. of the area. And then we have four distinct biological samples. So yeah. We got a nice good roll this time. Yeah, nice good haul. job, team. <laughs> oh, this is a good question maybe for Trevor and or Ashton. Um, people are wondering, is there like a simulator to operate the ROV, sort of like how uh, maybe astronauts go like in a simulator before they actually do the real thing? Or do you just sort of start out just right on the ground with the real deal? Here we start out right away. There are... ROV simulators in the oil and gas industry mm. because they have, you know, 500, 1,000 ROVs that are identical. So you can make a simulator, but Hercules is a one off. Mm. It's only the one vehicle, so making the simulator would cost probably as much as making the another ROV. Mm. So we just throw people in feet first. <laughs> Uh, another question for you, Trev. Yeah. Someone's asking, has a fish ever attacked the arm, or an animal ever attacked the arm on Herc? Attacked is a hard word to define, but I will say that we've sampled things near 
animals, and the animals have latched on. Oh. And then we try to put them in the box, and they won't let go. Have you ever had a backdrop and turned the lights on and made shadow puppets with the <laughs> arm? Not on purpose. <laughs> That's not true. I've definitely come at samples like. Rah, 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 rah. <laughs> <laughs> the smaller jaws, the non coral cutters move a lot faster. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I see how this could get dangerous once the uh, elbow and the shoulder are enabled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing can move quite quickly when you flail around, which is why checking your halt is so important. Okay. What's the most difficult thing you've ever had to retrieve with one of the arms? Or what would be maybe the most difficult thing to retrieve? I'd say engineering work for Ocean Networks Canada. You're doing a lot of stuff that requires both manipulators, mm. plugging in subsea connectors or grabbing instrumentation, undoing knots, whatever. Um, oh, undoing knots sounds hard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're, they're designed to be undone by the manip. They're not, not like undoing your shoelaces or something, but more you pull this thing and it releases a couple other things, and then, oh, that got tangled. Let's grab it from inside the loop and pull it out or stuff like that. Mm. How often do you get to use the knife? Uh, whenever we can avoid it, we don't. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we've used it to cut cut lines. Again, probably the biggest example would be Ocean Networks Canada. And I don't know, there's a line that is not behaving nicely or other various circumstances, and we have to pull the knife out and cut stuff. You know, I have to say this is a nice view of looking at what all of the different joints do. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. When we started our watch, you, we were talking about think? the seven-point cool. uh, manipulation okay. and uh, having Ashton work through some of those different joints is kind of fun to see. It was fun to do, Diane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so... I felt like I'm on a morning show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you are. Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> what would the show name be? Good morning, Nautilus. Yeah. <laughs> I woke up this morning thinking about Robin Williams, like, getting up at 4 a.m. and good morning, <laughs> Vietnam. <laughs> Good morning, Nautilus. <laughs> <laughs> Do I hear a radio show coming along? I think uh, my uh, coffee's finally kicking in, folks. Watch <laughs> out. Are you sure that's just coffee you got there, Diane? Woo! <laughs> 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 I love it, Ashton. You are just going with it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely turning into like a primetime drive show. <laughs> <laughs> we too can be trash TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So are we trying out the elbow? Is that what we're doing? This is nice. Trevor. This okay. is Trevor's skill right here. I'm trying here. to set up a, a test that's not totally crazy. Okay. Well, yeah, we can actually hit stuff now. That's pretty neat. Ooh. That's not useful without the shoulder. I would say let's not hit stuff. Okay. Um, no, we're not going to escape it. Okay. Yeah, try not to hit stuff. <laughs> it's not... <laughs> I was trying to see if that would be useful practice to, like, try to move it over there. It won't be. So try that. I think that'll... Okay. That won't be much different than what you already did. But I still have no elbow, right? You have elbow now. Oh, I have elbow. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> it's about to get complicated. Now you're including the other hand in your, in your practicing. Right. I'm halting. I'm a little nervous. Ooh. 
Go ahead. You're on SPL. Yes. No, you're not. Oh, how am I hearing you then? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you said Diane. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Yes, that's a good question. Uh, shipping samples is actually kind of tricky because not only do you have to do any sort of customs forms for plant and animal, but you also have to meet uh, regulations for shipping dangerous goods, meaning like if it's stored in ethanol, you can only have a certain amount per sample, per shipment, etc. So there are uh, regulatory guides for shipping internationally, for shipping nationally, for shipping by boat, by air, by sea, um, and they're all slightly different. Um, typically, airline shipping is more um, tricky, and they do the fewest or least amounts um, at a time. So yeah, that's uh, a big part of what we do towards the end of the cruise is trying to make sure that like our samples have all of the paperwork that they need, that they meet the guidelines for shipping, et cetera. So great question. Um, yeah, it's rather complicated and they make the books and all of the regulations as, as difficult to read as possible <laughs> as you can imagine. Sort of the legalese of those is, is tricky. Yeah, typically international regulations um, are trickier and different countries even have different codes. So I know from shipping in different parts of the world, uh, different airlines also might have different regulations. So like for instance, um, shipping from Chile, for example, you probably use a Chilean airline, maybe uh, Aeromexico as well, and then a U.S. airline. So you have to meet all of those different airline regulations. You have to meet Chilean regulations. You have to meet U.S. regulations. So you've got to check like five, six different um, levels before you ship anything. Am I allowed to try to grab the sucker or should I try not to touch anything? I think maybe moving that manipulator arm is a little more fun than looking uh, at uh, shipping oh, regulations. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. I have a follow-up question, Diane, and maybe sure. Beth too. Yep. So obviously got to get the samples back to mainland and back to the labs where they are going to be processed. Is there usually a sort of designated timeline for when the research on said samples needs to be done, or is it just sort of on the scientist's time and they then release that data or findings when they can, or is there a certain timeline that, uh, since it's sort of a partnership with Ocean Exploration Trust, that they try to have the data and the sort of findings out. Do we know anything about that process or timing? Yeah, um, Beth may be able to speak to the latter part of that. I can tell you that certain samples will last longer than others. Right. DNA in particular is uh, one that you need to process quicker and it needs to stay at temperature. Mm -hmm. So those, um, a lot of very tricky like RNA or DNA samples need to be frozen to negative 80. They need to stay within the range of like say negative 70 C to negative 80 in order to be viable. Mm -hmm. um, so when we ship samples, we often put a temperature data logger inside the sample oh, okay. so that we know uh, what the highest point was in its shipment. Mm. And that will give scientists an indication of whether that is a viable eDNA or DNA sample. Um, and those need to be processed pretty quickly. Uh, things that are dry may not need to be processed as quickly. Um, things that are in formalin are usually meant for sort of long-term storage, uh, usually for like historical collections and things like that. So that's a, a little bit about um, where and when. Um, Got it.
I think as far as the scientists processing their samples, mm -hmm. uh, that's a matter of timing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when and when they've got a chance to, to do that, if yeah. they have help, if they're going back out to sea, if they have classes and uh, right. teaching duties and exactly. things like that. That's, so, <laughs> that's um, what I was thinking about most. I was just like, I'm sure obviously this is, you know, part of people's research, but not all of their research. So it's like, do you bump certain research to the top and put something else to the side? Or, you know, just, just kind of wondering priority, I guess prioritization when yeah. samples are like coming off. But like you said, it probably has a lot to do with, you know, trying to get the best of something while mm -hmm. it's viable. Um, so that might uh, take part in figuring out priori prioritization and stuff. Yeah. All good questions. I think a research scientist often wears a, a lot of different hats mm -hmm. um, and a lot is required of them. So yes, I think there's prioritization of how and when the samples get processed yeah. in terms of their workload. <laughs> Another Herc question. Somebody's wondering. Yeah, go ahead. More about the attachments or supplemental tools that Hercules can carry. They've seen the sample boxes, the weight plates, and the knife. What else is there? We've got the suction sampler, just visible in view with the red and yellow. We've got knives, scoop. I had mentioned gas tights the other day. A little portable, almost weird ray gun looking thing. <laughs> uh, Pretty much anything scientists can dream up. As long as it fits within the jaws, we'll carry it around. Interesting. So, so far on this cruise, we've used the bags. What, 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 did, what did we call the scoop mesh with a mesh bag mesh attached? Scoop? Mesh scoop? Mesh scoop, I think. I don't know that it has an official name. I don't know <laughs> it does. It. On the dive plan, it's called a ring net. I don't know that oh. that's a real, a real name either. Huh. The hoop scoop? Net hoop bag. Scoop. Hoop scoop. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I often think of a ring net as, as something to sample plankton, like, you know, a bongo net or something like that, but. So for the, the when you're trying to do the wrist one, try yeah. to keep the wrist, sorry, words. When you're trying to do the wrist rotate yeah. one, try to keep the wrist pitch locked in place. Right now you're wrist pitching down, which was the first challenge. Oh, okay, gotcha. So you gotta keep that one locked and isolate just the rotation of the jaws. So just keep that. I got you. Yeah, exactly. And then keep yeah. that cookie yeah, there you go. on nice. the sticker. Nice. That was really good. Go, Ashton, go. Thank you. Ah, oh, wrong <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah, the way it, the, the way it goes is kind of confusing at first. I, the way I remember it is the right side of the rocker is like Herc is tightening a bolt, like righty-tighty. Oh, okay. Oh, that makes sense, yeah. But when it's looking at you, of course, it's... Reverso, but a little backwards. imagine those jaws are actually grabbing the, the screw or the bolt and actually tightening it. So a good value of this exercise is obviously practicing the movements, but also seeing the intuition level of each of the joints. So once you got the movements figured out, the biggest part of the craft manipulator skill is not actually moving the thing, it's planning ahead is planning your movements ah. so grabbing tooling for example grabbing the suction sampler grabbing it is one part of it but figuring out how you grab it so that you can actually effectively do the science that's the part that's the kind of the brain game um, and in this case seeing how much easier it is to do wrist pitch versus wrist rotate so if you can grab a sample that you know you need to balance in a way that you can utilize the joints in the easier way you set yourself up for success So thinking about how the movement's going to go from start to end, are you going to run out of room? Are you going to hit a joint limit and then, and then have trouble? All that kind of stuff, uh, of course, comes with practice. But yeah, I have new respect for for you for doing this so well. I mean, it just it just comes with time. Everyone everyone gets it after they spent time on it. All right, do you want to do shoulder now? You think you're ready for that? Oh. I think I'm ready for that. Okay. 
I think you can trust me with shoulder. All right. Okay. Let me pause it. Halted. Oops. Um, Beth, I think this probably is a question for you. Someone's Oops, wondering, do you use a filter or precipitation method for concentrating, collecting the eDNA? Um, so the eDNA samples are part of a study, a long-term study um, by someone, I believe, at NOAA Fisheries. So the sample, the Niskin samples, when they come on board, a liter of water from each of the bottles is collected um, and then filtered. Um, I do not know the size of the filter mesh, um, whether it's 0 0.45 or I'm just trying to think up some 0 0.2 here. microns. I don't know That's the answer great. to that question, but it is filtered, and then the filters are preserved in an RNA later solution um, before they're shipped to the lab. Um, so it's not a DNA precipitation method. Yeah. We're not adding alcohol or mm. anything like that. Um, generally, one. the DNA concentrations aren't high enough for around. those kinds of methods Oops. to be very effective. <laughs> Either side. Okay. And then over without touching it. That's okay. a good one. And then you can do the same from all leaned in like this. Oops. Ooh. Over there. Over there. And then over there so from different shoulder heights try to try that out okay just kind of dance around the suction tube yeah mm -hmm. of course play around with it out there first and get a feel for it so okay. there's no shoulder azimuth which means you can't go left and right with it okay cool just shoulder elevation exactly trevor how much does a Seven function manipulator craft predator <laughs> run. Uh, I want to say the craft is 250k. Okay. Um, Woof. <laughs> I don't know that though. There's, there's, I mean, you could spend whatever you want on an arm. You can get some more basic ones for probably 30k, and you could spend, I, th I want to say, up to 450, depending on the capabilities and the strength and the. Etc. Mm. Etc. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Is it safe for me to come all the way up on the yes. shoulder? If you go all the way up on the shoulder and allowance. up on the elbow, that's bad. That's bad. Okay. We won't do that. Yeah. Keep the dance moves to a minimum. If you keep mm -hmm. the colors in in screen, you're safe. Oh. But if you hide the white, that's totally fine. <laughs> I should. <laughs> oh, colors went too out. Yeah, as long as you can see blue, you're safe. Okay. Even if you can't, you're probably safe, but I'm giving you some buffer there. All right. So the the easiest way to try this one, the first level, would be having the shoulder up as far as you can. Up as far as I can? Up as far as you can. Okay. It's weird having the thing back in. It gets a little confusing. What's left, what's right. So I would try that first, yeah. Gentle taps. Nice. Cool. How often has, or if at all, has the arm been replaced on Hercules, either of the arms? These are the original arms. Oh, wow. Sturdy. Oh, it looked better be for that price. We've definitely uh, <laughs> done a lot of repairs on them and maintenance over the years, replaced parts and upgrades and stuff like that. Made a couple changes, but in general, it's mainly to keep them running or to change them to work with our system better. Mm.
for example, the coral cutters, they are not a standard off-the-shelf manipulator part. That was a custom design oh. modification. We took existing manipulator parts, cut them up, added some bits in the middle, and uh, made them work for us. And they work pretty well. Nice. What What is unique about them? So you know the, you can see the snaggle tooth part at the end? Yep. Those are usually uh, much closer to the wrist assembly. So all those three, three by two, so six bolts, Yep. and all the red and orange tape. That's the extension part we put on. Those are the part with the blades and the Tigon tubing inside. Oh, that's what it is. It's Tigon tubing. Yeah. Okay. Just for the little softer squeeze of the of the corals. I always assumed there was like a razor blade or something in there. Well, there is too. <laughs> so the three bolts on the one side, the three bolts on the other side are two razor blades that mesh over each other to snip. Yeah. And then so you don't snip and squish the coral. You snip it with the... Uh, razor blades and you squish it with a tie gun instead of with a metal on metal contact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how often do we have to replace the razor blades considering we also pick up rocks with these things? We pick up rocks a lot. Yeah, they're not actually razor blades. That's uh they're okay. just sharp metal. Got and it. we run a file over them uh, probably once a cruise. Okay. They're not gonna cut paper, but yeah. they're just pointier than anything else. Got it. Hmm. You're definitely not going to do the tomato test with them. <laughs> <laughs> One of the many reasons not to shake hands with the manipulator. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> many, many reasons. All right, can you put the arm up and store it, please? Let's just watch the winch for a little bit. That sounds like a plan. So you bring the shoulder all the way up and close the jaws. Okay. It's best to halt with the sticker facing either away from the arm or towards inboard, so that way with Oops. the jaws open when you turn it on, they don't ram into the, into the arm. Okay. Sticker facing. Facing either facing into the arm or away from the arm. But 90 degrees out from what you have now. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Okay, and you can halt it there. Okay. Halt it. And you can hit the blue button. Blue button. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. We'll do one more session after we get past this winch zone. That's if awesome. you're out for it. Yeah, thanks so much. I am. Okay, so I've slowed down to 10. Back on the winch. Okay. Uh, somebody's wondering, is the majority of the hydraulic power on her used for the arm manipulation rather than like the sample box? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. uh, thrusters take most of it, followed by the manipulator, followed by everything else. Yeah, sample box is almost nothing mm. as far as hydraulic power. What but about when we run the slurp? Slurp takes a good amount, but not as much as thrusters. The slurp is approximately half of a thruster. Got it. I want to say craft is about two thrusters worth. I like this unit of measurement. <laughs> <laughs> sort of like measuring things in jelly beans. Right. <laughs> That's not great. Are we descending? No, we are ascending. We are headed back up to the surface and we'll be recovering um, both ROVs in like an hour, I think. Yeah, a little bit, tiny bit over an hour. Yeah, maybe a little hour and 20 or so. Yeah. And then we get to look at the samples. Yes. Got to get down to the lab today. Trevor, can I ask a winch question? Yeah. 
um, so this spot that is regularly troublesome. Yeah. Uh, why is that? Is it just the way the wire is wound that there's like a divot or something? Yeah. So the winch has to be spooled like perfectly yeah. at the base. Otherwise, it'll have this problem farther out towards the outside. Sure. Okay. So the I don't know that when this was installed, if we verified that the flanges were true, which involves getting, you know, spinning the winch while checking for a quarter inch of run out is a lot. Yeah. And there's no way you can see that by eye. And I wasn't there for the install. I don't know who QC'd that. I couldn't tell you. That's, that's a possible contributor. Another possible contributor could be that some excess winch grease, or excess cable grease got on one of the layers towards the core. Uh, you know, there's a multitude of reasons which would cause that, but it's all from coming from deeper layers. And it just propagates up. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And I guess when this is originally spooled, it has to be spooled under tension, right? That's right, yeah. The traction winch does that itself, actually, uh, which is very convenient for this system. A lot harder to spool a direct drive because you need to make a whole tension profile, Yeah. whereas this one is 2,000 pounds all the way. Okay. So traction winch takes all the tension of the vehicle itself out of the equation and applies a constant tension to 2,000 pounds. Thanks. Is the view on channel three, the winch hauling the ROVs? Yes, right? It is. Yes, thank you. Oh, tether question. How does the ship communicate with Herc? Fiber optics. <laughs> Same thing that provides internet to a lot of areas in the world now. A little glass tube is the wrong word. Not not hollow tube, whatever. A glass rod. Hollow fiber. A little fiber. Fiber. It's a fiber. <laughs> <laughs> and that goes through the cable. And it's because it's so small, it's able to bend and conform to the wraps on the winch drum as well as all the way through the tether. And that carries a little bit of light. Light goes up, light goes down, and that carries ones and zeros, which is all of our communications. Oh, have you all had, have you ever seen anything surprising or cool sort of on the way up or on the way down like has anything just like super cool just like come across the screen anything big or in all of your expedition times well there's that highlight video i don't know where it is on the nautilus live page right but of like a sperm whale yeah that's true giving a little check out <laughs> uh on our previous expeditions in the papahanamoa kuakea marine national monument a bit further south of here uh, it was not uncommon to see uh, oceanic white tip sharks come by as we were approaching the surface. Sometimes. We saw a tinafore yesterday. That's true. Sometimes uh, schools so of yellow. squid. Yeah. Really? Yep. Ooh, that would be cool to see. Yeah, and then they get a little freaked out and start ejecting <laughs> ink everywhere. Yep. <laughs> it's all fun and games till the ink comes out. There you go. <laughs> you definitely have see how that's an, a good predator avoidance strategy because you're just looking. You're like, what? Where is a squid? What is? <laughs> no, that's ink. What is that? <laughs> All right, let's see how this goes. It's kind of like the Great British Bake Off. The only drama we ever have is like, is the winch going to work? <laughs> is the bread going to rise? <laughs> Otherwise wholesome. <laughs> uh, well, the souffle. <laughs> with the plate. <laughs> it's That's called funny. the Great British Bake Off? <laughs> like a completely wholesome show, you know, until that little bit of drama. That's still pretty wholesome. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
not like, did someone put a knife in their cake? It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably okay. We'll see you next time. I need to do a gauge check after this. Yeah, Roger. I definitely skipped one in there. Do I like that? Oh. At least it's being consistent. It's, uh, it's doing the same thing every time. the snap yeah is that good news it's news <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad A lot of firsts for this watch on our this um, dive. First descent, <coughs> first ascent mm -hmm. of the cruise, mm -hmm. or uh, of our shift. Didn't we do an ascent already? I thought we did. Did we? We, we did. We did a little bit uh, of blue water. I think so. We did recovery, too. I don't remember did, this. Did we? Maybe I didn't. Oh. I think, I I think, think we so. did. Yeah, we did recovery. I think it was so, like day yeah. one, dive yeah. one. That's right. Okay, that looks good. I think we're All past right. the spot. Let's uh, back up to zip, zip, zip. What speed would you like? Let's start at 15 and see what we can do from there. All right. Stephen, I have a video question for you. Sure. Um, have you always uh, done or mostly done video engineering for, you know, submerged situations like this? Or did you do more on land video and which one is more difficult, do you think? Uh, I did everything on land until I was a video intern on Nautilus. Mm. When um, was that? That was 2018. Oh, that's not too long ago. 2018? Yeah. 17, maybe? Were you in Mexico? Nope, 2018, no. Oh. My well, first dive was uh, on the Octopus Garden. Okay. Oh, oh. what a first oh. dive. Oh, my yep. wow. gosh. No pressure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, whether what's what's <laughs> harder and what's easier, I mean, it kind of depends. depends. Um, there are definitely video engineers on the ship who are leads who have a much more technical understanding of a lot of the equipment and these computer racks mm -hmm. that we work with. Um, Jeff and Al and um, yeah, they have experience in live broadcast mm. uh, for sports mostly. So out of trucks, those types of uh, events. So these towers of computers in front of me is something that they're much more familiar with. So this is different. This is like kind of unique for me. Most things I do are camera on a tripod or camera on my shoulder. Right. Yep. Mm. Well, I guess it's also different too in the sense that you're controlling the zoom and the lights and stuff, but you're not actually controlling where the camera is pointing. Yep. So it definitely has to be a lot more like a, a team. Totally. Yeah. Team yeah. camera. Yep. Lots of communication necessary. Yeah. I actually have done some work more recently though that uh, doing motion control work with cameras on land, where I'm controlling them with a PlayStation controller. Ooh. And there, and then you might have somebody else who has the focus control. So, not too different, but this is definitely the farthest I get from cameras that I operate. Mm. When you are doing land-based work, are you often with a team where there's like a, a camp crew that's preparing all your meals and things like that? Or is that something you have to factor into the equation of your day? Um, to prepare your food because that's definitely something different typically on, on jobs on land I don't I don't deal with preparing meals or food mm -hmm. so I've worked on everything from feature films with 
over 100 people on a crew to doing things on my own, you know, one-man mm -hmm. band, as they say. Most of the stuff I do these days is three or four people on a team mm -hmm. and doing wildlife documentaries and, yeah, I mean, on a three or four-person team, you have to share a lot more responsibilities. You know, when you get to a big production that has a dozen or 50 or 100 crew, everybody has a really specific role. My first, one of my first jobs was on a feature film and 100 people on the crew, and my one job was to manage the walkie-talkies. So I had to keep track of who had one, <laughs> which one they had, make sure everyone had batteries, get them a new battery if they ran out. So jobs get so specific. Mm -hmm. That is very, very specific, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's people who just operate teleprompters. You know, there's people who do makeup, people who just pull focus on a camera. Um, wow. The jobs get really specific. Very yeah. specialized, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this, this work is uh, not something I ever imagined until I found out about Nautilus and looked into it. And I was like, well, that's really cool. Right. And uh, yeah, I got the opportunity to come out as an intern. And been going strong for five years. Mm -hmm. When you're not on an expedition, do you do uh, online terrestrial video things in between, or are you just kind of? When I'm not on Nautilus? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I'm still doing a lot of stuff on land. Got yeah. it. Good, good, good. I've only, the most I've been out in one year on Nautilus is about six weeks, so. Okay. It's a lot of other time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I gotta fill that time. Yeah. Some other things. <laughs> All right, gauge check is done over here. Sure, keep us at 15. Yeah, 15 is good. Okay. Um, all right, let's do some shoulder azimuth too now. Ooh. So get a feel for that. Okay. And then a realistic challenge is, uh, you know how uh, earlier we were doing uh, kind of this action? Yeah. Around? Well, the realistic one is grabbing a scoop, which is you can see as you shoulder azimuth, the jaw angle obviously changes. So this is square to the scoop right now, and this is okay. not. So that would be back. This way to be square to the vehicle. So try and, what am I trying to do here? Try to well, approach it like. Well, there's a couple of different stages here. You can try to lock the jaws half open. Okay. So you can let go and they stay half open. And then you can do kind of operation maneuver here where you go over it, and then as you pull away from it, you rotate the jaws accordingly. Okay. Keeping them square to the vehicle the whole time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, gotcha. Okay, I'm gonna give you unlocked jaws. So you gotta fight that challenge first. Okay. And also just play around with the shoulder outside of the impact zone first and okay. get a feel for it. Thanks. still deciding how I like it. Yeah, definitely try both ways. In an ideal world, you can use either one. Okay. But this is the time to practice both to get a feel for it. a little tricky. It is, yep. Just like it's nearly impossible with the other jaws. These are the only ones you can do it at all with. Really? I think I've seen the parallels get locked in one position one time. It's really, 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 really hard. Ah. So basically what you got to do is you got to feather it with the, uh, the trigger, I guess you call it. Okay. And get it stopped before you hit the button. Oh, okay. So you can't kind of stop it as you're moving. Exactly. The button keeps the 
uh, commanded hydraulic input versus position. There's oh. no position feedback on JAWS. It only has the openness of the solenoid valve. Okay. So you command it to stay in the current configuration. Okay. So right now it looks like it's slightly opening. If you wait long enough, they'll get all the way open. Oh, no. It's really hard. Okay. This is why I get the manual windows, right, Trevor? <laughs> <laughs> all Just right. let go and Let's they're done. Yeah. They don't stick. Steven, that's such a cool video you have of Ashton's hand um, on the maneuvering <laughs> thing. I can't even see that from back here. That camera view is so cool. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the cameras I can actually pan and tilt, mm. unlike the ones on the ROVs. Oh. Welcome back, Annabelle. <laughs> She's been down in the lab prepping for taking samples from the ROV and then processing them. Yep. for uh, Team Science with Beth Orca. Speaking of teams, still got to come up with a shift name. This is true. Ooh, the pressure's on. Are you still on the Paragorgeous oh, I name? I got it. Nice. I like Paragorgeous. I think it is clever. <laughs> 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 okay. I do. I'm um, sure the, the men in the room <laughs> love that. <laughs> <laughs> men can be gorgeous. I'm all, I'm all for men it. can be I'm gorgeous. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Everybody can be gorgeous. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. People are up and around. We can do a second round of suggestions. We are wondering what our four to eight watch name should be. There was another really creative one, like the Nautilus. Oh, oh, oh. What was that oh, one? Oh, man. What was that? Nautical by nature. Yes. Oh, Thank you, yeah. Stephen, with the save. Yeah. Hard no. <laughs> hard. Oh, sorry, sorry, no. Hard. Hard. I was hard. talking about something else. Trevor, hard, hard no? Hard, yeah. You <laughs> <laughs> recovered quickly and said talking about something All else. All right. No, 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 I wasn't talking about the name. Oh. I was talking about something else. Are you sure? <laughs> Maybe that could be our shift name. What's that? No. Hard no. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I was like, oh, never mind, never mind. <laughs> abort, abort. And people are saying that you are killing it, so. <gasps> you are. Talk <laughs> me up, that. general public. <laughs> <laughs> this is very unnatural. It is, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine what it would be like if I learned how to drive a car while everybody was watching me on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Nerve-wracking. Just so your yeah. hands, though. First time I ever used a Craft Predator was on a different system, and which shall remain nameless. And they're like, okay, here's what all the joints do. Try them out. You know, I got five minutes of playing around with all the joints. They're like, okay, now try and you know grab a floating monkey's fist on the, on the front. <laughs> and of course I couldn't, and their feedback was slightly more negative. I'm sorry, a floating monkey. Oh, the okay. knot. The knot, yeah. The yeah. knot, the knot. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You're no good at this. Come on, figure it out. Uh, uh, what? Wow. He's like, I just, I just got here. I just got here, yeah. <laughs> Laughing at me. It was, it was fun, but it was different teaching style, <laughs> we'll say. Hard no. <laughs> 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 so the wrist feels a little, like, stuck. Is that normal? Uh, Arthritis. Oh. Uh, a little sticky. There you go. Oh, thank you. You're in a different mode, which we haven't talked about yet. Ah. Are you getting any kind of haptic feedback? No, we turned oh, that off. No. Okay. Wait, that's an option? Yeah, it's awful. <gasps> it, doesn't, it doesn't work in our use case. Oh. The, in our use case, because we can't hear or see or anything with it, you push something and the controller pushes back, so you push harder without realizing it, and it pushes back harder, 
and then it gets in this feedback loop where you end up smashing stuff. It's oh. just, it's, it's a bad scene and not worth Sounds. it. So is that how you, you tell when something's quote heavy though? No, um, okay, good question. Yeah, so if I'm lifting up with the shoulder, I know how much to move the controller and how much that will move the manip. But the movement of the controller is just a defined amount of hydraulic input. Okay. So if it doesn't move as much, it means it's taking more hydraulic input to move it than I expected. So you have to do a further movement for a heavier object. Yeah, or it moves slower. I guess it moves slower is a better way to put it. Okay. It will get there, but it'll just be more delayed. And what is that difference between that and hap I don't know what haptic feedback means. Haptic feedback means like uh, imagine a imagine a video game controller that vibrates in your hand when yeah. you're you know first person shooter whatever. And it vibrates. Like the rumble pack and the N64. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. this one will actually move the joints similar to that. It won't vibrate, but it will actually f fight you a little bit. I guess a better example. Have you? Look driven a vehicle jelly. with the the lane departure assist thing. Unfortunately, where it, I have, yes. Yeah, the auto steering wheel a little yeah, bit. Yeah. It doesn't control the steering wheel for you. It just reminds you that it's I've there. I've also had one that vibrates one side of the seat. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Wild. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's very similar to that steering wheel concept where you can absolutely fight through it, but it doesn't want you to. Right. All right, shift name uh, suggestion, su uh, suggestion, the marine manipulators. <laughs> Sounds very stealthy. So when I was talking about earlier with the half uh, half closed jaws and following over, you can use the scoop handle for that, or you can even use these little plastic rails. They're only okay. this far, but you can try to slide over those. Okay. While keeping the jaws rotated. Let me do a little rotate. Rotate. All right, a little scoopy guy. I'll give you a quick tip down here. Oh, that'd be nice. Thanks. Have there been any? Yep. Nobody. Yeah. Uh, nobody has said anything. Mm -hmm. I would say locking the jaws halfway open is the Steven, least used skill you're practicing quick right now. Sunrise check. Oh, okay. I like rarely do that. Oh, that's good. That's oh yeah. Surprising. Like, like the light hardest there. skill. Looking yeah, at the really ones tough. up front. But the rotating. The jaws Ooh, while you move ooh. the arm is a is a super useful one. Okay. What view is that, Steven? That is our starboard camera. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Panned off. Usually it's at the deck, but I see. Spun it away. Yeah, makes sense. Point it towards the east. Am I? I don't know. I just. <laughs> well, it towards the off starboard. Starboard, yeah. That's the only way you're oh, gonna yeah. get east. Yep. Might be facing south. I don't know which way it's facing. Yeah, you're probably right. It, um, yeah, it's probably a little bit south, mostly okay. south. Maybe the bow cam would see a little bit east. I checked that. It was a little bit 
grainy still. Okay. All right, thanks. I'm sure people are enjoying watching Ashton's. <laughs> they are. <laughs> and so you can put it back there if you like. Did I just get my hand stuck? <laughs> yep, sure did. <laughs> oh, no. There you Thanks. go. You're free. Nice job. <laughs> <Woo>. Freedom. <laughs> Shake it off. <laughs> also, a hydraulics question. Someone said, since hydraulics are fluid pressure related, does the depth affect the hydraulics on Herc, or are they completely protected from external pressure? Great question. Ooh. So hydraulic pumps create flow, contrary to popular belief, not pressure. And the resistance to flow is what creates the pressure. But that creates pressure, a pressure difference between ambient and the inside of the tubes. So also called gauge pressure. So at any given depth, the pressure is always 3,000 PSI gauge. Mm. Which means the absolute pressure is 3,000 PSI gauge plus whatever the ocean depth pressure is currently acting on it. So... Yeah, there's no compression of oil at depth or mi minimal compression of oil at depth. So the absolute pressure of the oil in the arm is, it d depends on how deep we are, obviously, but it can mm -hmm. be over six or 7,000 PSI absolute. But because there's no, uh, because there's a big squeeze from the water on the outside, it doesn't blow up any hydraulic hoses. It doesn't exceed our 3,000 PSI working pressure because it's a, more about the difference between the inside and the outside than it is the absolute. Hopefully that yes. answers the question. I'm sure that was an awesome answer for them. The key word there is PSI gauge. PSIG. The viewer wants to do their own homework. Ashton, somebody said, are you feeling RSI in the wrists yet? Welcome to arm manipulations. <laughs> <laughs> Just seeing all the awkward hand angles. So if you're bored with these challenges or one another, I can give you more. Okay. More different ones. I'm kind of making it at my own, so yeah, let's let's do another one. Okay. You want me to hand it over? Sure. Yeah, probably easier to show than to explain. Words are really not <laughs> a good way to communicate here. So another one that uses a lot of the shoulder. Okay. Should be good to good practice. I'll just close these jaws all the way. Is you can, can I, any more tip down there? No, nope, absolutely not. Oh, so, yeah. So, I'm going to poke the end here. Oh, okay. Bonk. Just like boop it. And then, of course, you can boop it from the top. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Try to do it a little less thumpy than I'm doing it. But anyway, the challenge would be to stay right there as you move oh. the arm around it. Ooh, okay. I'm not doing so good either. Anyway, um, and let me think of a, something else here. So, so maybe this one's a better example. Okay. What am I? What the point I'm actually trying to make is. Sorry, hold on a sec. Got to do my <laughs> other job here. That's ah. okay. Fly the machine. Do you need me to? No, you're good. Okay. I just slowed down. I was doing the pull away from the ship, not my. Ooh. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <coughs> Do we ever care about the winch winding on this side of the drum? Uh, yes, we watch it, but it's a lot less critical. Okay. Just because the center happened to work better. Hmm. This is not quite making the point I wanted it to. Okay, well, doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't know, this is a good one. Okay. Moving all 
or a lot of the joints at once. Is there any concern about hitting the elbow on a camera or no. anything? Okay. Nice. You gotta really want it. Okay. <laughs> Good question. So just don't. Just I don't really, really want it. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> really don't want it. I really yeah. do want breakfast, though. Man, oh, man my I'm stomach hungry. just started growling. Yeah, I'm hungry. Anyway, I think that's a good one. <laughs> okay, try to, cool. Try to poke from the top and try to keep the jaws in one spot while you're rolling over the side. Clearly, it's pretty sloppy, but mm -hmm. the general goal is to move the manipulator around the end effector. That's cool. Okay, thanks. This is a good lesson. <laughs> so, back row, are you going to go get breakfast before you go... Recover your samples? Oh, probably. That's recommended. I would <laughs> recommend it. Breakfast waits for no one. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I also need to talk with our mapping coordinator. Figure out our plan once we get on deck. I'll take over the uh, tele telestrator if you want to. Yeah. Oh yeah, that could be a fun thing. <laughs> give Ashton some targets to try to <laughs> Oh, there you go. Right. Pop the fish before Pop it disappears. The fish. Oh my what god. What have we been waiting for this whole time? <laughs> this is I didn't, cruel. I didn't want to... <laughs> this is a Stressed advanced Ashton out. <laughs> yeah. There's a Draw reason we don't pattern. run with the telestrator on this window. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The riffraff in the back row can do whatever they want. <laughs> this is the new. Advanced. This is the new fish game. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Have you beat Lynette's high score yet? So slow. I think. Oh, Lynette on the rowing still machine. rains down there. Lynette is the current champion of okay. the. I did a second try. Rowing machine. I did a second game. try, and yeah. my second try was worse than my first try. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. I do. I do one a day. You know. I think. Keep it. Keep it. At, fun. <laughs> don't want to burn out on the fish game. No, no. You can't be sitting there for it. Really? Do you really? Okay. <laughs> fish. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I agree. I still haven't done any rowing that's not the fish game. <laughs> I have Ever. to say though, when I tried the fish game, like mostly I just kind of sat there and waited for fish to come to me. Yeah, so me it too. was like less yeah. effective about the <laughs> exercising. Can someone yeah. explain the fish game? It is on the rowing machine it's a, down yeah. at the gym. It's and a four uh, minute. Yeah, go ahead, Lena. Yeah. You are the expert. Yes. Yeah. Wait, I don't know if you're on SPL. Are you on SVL? Lynette, you want to get on SVL? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, so on the rowing machine in the gym, there is a game called Fish Game. Um, and you are a little fish. Um, and you sit on the left-hand side of the screen as other fish swim toward you. Uh, the harder you row, the higher you raise up in the water column. And the idea is to eat as many fish as you can as they swim toward you. Uh, but you can only eat fish that are smaller than you. And you have to avoid fish that are bigger than you or you'll get eaten. So we're having a competition on the ship to see who can get a high score. <laughs> OK, so you're controlling your rowing speed to move yourself towards these fish. Yes. I got it. Yep. OK. There's a good perspective thing, eh? Yeah. Bonk the rubber and not the... It's hard to know where you are. It is hard. You kind of do want like a real object to mm -hmm. rotate around or something on the hand end, on the human end. <laughs> I mean, I'll still do that grabbing Niskins. I'll like, go for the loop and oh, swing and a miss. Mm -hmm. Oh, Trevor, that person said that your hydraulic lesson was awesome and he learned oh, something new or they learned something new awesome what they didn't like my discourse about shipping dangerous goods <laughs> hey hey hard no i enjoyed it hard no <laughs> i was down in the lab listening to you and i enjoyed it as well no it's it's really terrible stuff 
<laughs> I don't recommend it. She's like, no, it's quite stressful. Just don't <laughs> think about it. Yeah, that's just like paperwork. Oh, yeah. I could do a quick expansion on the hydraulics thing. If you've seen the side of Hercules or Argus or Atalanta or anything, we have what's called junction boxes. Those are little boxy looking things where all the cables run in and out. It's a good way to not only plug in our lights, but also our uh, scientific instruments or whatever. And they're full of oil. And the reason for that is, well, obviously electronics don't like water, so it keeps the water out. Um, but it allows us easy access instead of going in through a pressure housing. But that means we can't keep all our computers and stuff in there because they see full ocean pressure. So we have this box which we fill full of oil, get rid of all the air. The air will compress and the thing will implode if we don't do that. So we fill it with oil. And we fill it to, I don't know, three, five, seven PSI. And it will always be three, five, seven, whatever PSI greater than ambient. So on the on the deck, it's you know, the gauge reads three PSI, and at depth, the gauge also reads three PSI, which means at depth, the actual pressure inside that box is five thousand and three, and outside the ocean is five thousand. So it always keeps a little bit more pressure inside mm. the oil box than outside. That's done with the use of compensators. So anyway, similar to the hydraulics, it's all about gauge pressure. Very interesting. All right, I got one more, one more challenge for you. Okay, I'm up for it. Bring it around the starboard side and touch one of the push cores. Ooh. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so there's a great example. Check your hull. Hold. I hit it, but I didn't yeah. check it. Always check. He. Close one. We haven't taken a push core yet. This. We haven't found any sediment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no no core to push, mm. or something. All right. All right, so you can bring your shoulder up all the way. I'm kind of getting it reoriented a little bit. Yeah, totally. It's a little twisty. So the thing is, you cannot go to the starboard side if your shoulder's up all the way and your elbow's up. Ah. But it's nice to be tucked in as much as possible for these maneuvers. We're okay. often on the side of some rocks or maybe there's corals or whatever, and you don't want to get all smashy. So the generally recommended technique is keep your shoulder up as much as you can justify okay. and the elbow in as much as you can justify. All right. That gets harder with a push core because they're long and gangly, but you make do. So right now you should be elbowing down as much as you can. Elbow. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Because if you halt there for a sec, yeah, I'm gonna show you something. The aluminum there on the side yeah. is much lower than everything else, and that will impact right on where the white part is. Okay. On the arm. So you're you got some clearance there, of course, but it's good to have a lot in the bank. Okay. Thank you. Elbow in, wrist shoulder yep. out, shoulder up. I could elbow in more, couldn't I? You could, but yeah, that's that's totally fine. And I also recommend keeping the jaws cl as closed as justifiable. So right now, you do not need the jaws open. You should keep them closed. Less stuff to get hooked up on things, especially when empty. Okay. Yeah, There's a rock ahead. in there. Stuff rolls over, but you can get all caught up pretty easily. <laughs> all right. You see a bubble right now? How your wrist is pitched right into your ram? Yes. Try to avoid that, too. Maybe I can. <laughs> Yeah, that was a, a little self plug for sure. Um, no, it, thank you. I appreciate so that. But yes, it's, it's that something that uh, okay. we have to do for pitch. science samples and a Not lot of that. industry, right? Wrist pitch uh, is the, this joint here. It's that guy. Ah. So yeah, wrist rotate, wrist pitch, wrist uh, uh, wrist yaw. This one. That's yaw. So you want to oh. pitch, pitch up. Right now you're grinding the yaw into the ram. Sorry about that. So you're still pitching in. You want to do the other way. Uh, there you go. There we go. Yeah. And now you're totally parallel. You can see on bubble the side view is a good okay. way to know. All right, All right. team. Maybe hard no. I'm going to head down. <laughs> uh, Ashton, great job. 
Thank you. Later. Yes, awesome. <laughs> Hashtag so actually, hold a sec. Just stop <laughs> it up right there a sec. Right hold now, so you see how this is all cranked down there? Yes. And your pitch, you don't have much more in your controller to tilt back. Right. But you have a lot more in the in the arm itself. So uh -huh. it, I would recommend you are halted. Like I'd recommend holding it more like this right now. So this is more okay. square to the world. Okay. And that way you have the whole range of wrist pitch, whole which is a very motion. commonly used joint. Thank I'm you. I'm going to switch you over to the sample salvo so you get a better view. Okay. I'm going to switch you over to the sample salvo so you get a better view. <laughs> so you can see the arm coming over. And now see if you can just touch one of the heads of the push cores. If you don't think you can do it gently, then I wouldn't bother. I but, think um, I can do it. Okay, so another trick here is right now you can't see the jaws, right? Right. Before you get all tucked in, go back out, find the jaws in the camera, and then move those. Move okay. the arm around the jaws versus the jaws around the arm. Clever. Hmm, Trevor, one of our viewers said Jones. that they are in school to become a millwright, and it's been very helpful to see this real-life example Great. of hydraulics. Awesome, yeah. So you won't be able to get... Uh -huh. uh, sorry, maybe I should have worded my problem better. For grabbing a push core, you want to come in this way. Looking oh. at this camera, you want to come in sideways. You don't want to come this way. Okay. Because you're going to get really blinded by this part, and you won't be able to see anything. So in order to come in, yeah, sideways, exactly like that. And I'd also recommend, before you start there, yeah. see how your wrist pitch is all the way up now? <laughs> yeah. You're at the end of your joint limit. So okay. it's fine to be that way until you need to move further that way. So you want to kind of keep all the joints in their neutral position, kind of mid-range, so you have a little bit of movement in all of them at any given moment. Okay. So I can straighten up that shoulder, maybe. Yeah, and bring the bring the forearm out, bring the elbow out. That's the wrist pitch. There's your elbow. Yep. And again, it's not incorrect to have your wrist all pitched up like that. It just can limit you later. So this is where I'm talking about the, the planning several steps ahead. Okay. This is the key part of it. It's like 80% getting set up and then 20% actually executing it. That's interesting thinking about planning ahead so mm -hmm. that you still have some range of motion. Mm -hmm. I'm making this look very difficult. No, it's, <laughs> great. it's like backing a boat trailer. It's yeah. harder. Yeah. <laughs> Except your trailer has a trailer. And another trailer. Attached to that trailer is another trailer. Rah. Okay, one second. Can I boop it? Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> boop. I would say we can't see the tip of the jaws, so I don't know if you've booped it or not. Oh, no. <laughs> boop. How do I do that? Arr. Hold. And then, ah. There you go. Yeah. OK. Great. Boop. Nice. Yes. Let me boop. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> For folks watching Nautilus Live, we just passed about 500 meters of depth, which means we've got about a half hour to go, <laughs> maybe a little more, <laughs> till the surface. You the prize. And uh, we <laughs> have one of our ROV pilot interns doing some exercises with the, uh, the grabber arm. It's pretty fun to watch. Yeah, interesting too. Even though I feel like I would get like carpal tunnel from like how you have to hold. Seriously. Like that's so intense. You have carpal tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Hard no. <Good> Hard no. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Was that all three? Uh, I'm not sure. Hmm. I'm not sure. Did I actually get this guy? I don't know. I think I'm behind him. Okay. Yeah, the third one. You can see that on your other view there. The middle one. Nice wrist pitch. Good one. Ooh. Learning from the best. Good work. Thank you. Just before you stow the arm, <laughs> I want to show you something <laughs> else. Okay. That's a, a good reason to monitor your wrist pitch. This is one of the uh, most obvious examples. 
So I'm not going to do any challenge here. I just want to not be able to not have to use words to describe it. Okay. <clears throat> Boop him again. Yeah, I'm getting some spatial awareness. Yeah, big time. <laughs> All right, do you want me to hand it off to you? Sure, just for a second, then you yeah. can go right back. All right, we are on hold. No rogue robots. Right. So, when you're picking out a push core, you come at the side here. Okay. And you pull it straight up. And you see right now how I'm wrist pitching down? We did that earlier, right? Balancing yeah. the cookie. You're totally balancing the cookie on this one. Okay. So I'm not going to do that with wrist rotate because that's really hard. I'll get my wrist uh, probably right here. Uh, just kidding, right here. And then I'll pull up and I watch my left hand here. I'm just pushing up on that joint. Okay. And that, ugh, not if you do it wrong. Let me, not, let me try not doing it wrong. As I push up on that joint, I actually move both joints at once. And the key here, what I'm trying to show you is if I'm wrist pitched all the way like this, uh -huh. then now my wrist yaw swings me this way instead of ah. up and down. Okay. So right now I can swing up and down really easily mm -hmm. and I can align that push core in that way, but I don't really need, I don't really need this dimension because I have that with elbow and shoulder. I don't okay. need to move the push core. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to... I think I get what you're saying. It's, it's really hard to use words for this. You yeah. have the up-down dimensions with I elbow the, and exactly. shoulder. So and if I have wrist, the farther away dimensions the with that. Okay. Have, that's the key. Right now, the only, wrist yaw only gets me farther away or closer. But I have that already with this. So if I put it down here, I get the angle, inboard-outboard angle with that. And I get the farther away closer with elbow. Nice. Okay. So that's where that, uh, this is, yeah, just Advanced comes with practice. So arming. anyway, try okay. that again. And wrist pitch is a, is a very powerful part of this arm, but because it's duplicated with the elbow, it's often, you can get away with doing it differently. So okay. there's, a, there's a lot of different techniques there. Not, a lot of them are all correct. Some of them are less so, but a lot of them are different in your Appropriate for different circumstances, I guess. Okay. All righty. Let's see if I can duplicate that. Yeah, even enough, just enough to get a feel for it. There was no real specific challenge there, but just so you get a feel for what that what that looks like. It's really, uh, I've really struggled to put into words what I'm trying to describe there. And, it's really the only way to learn this is just do it 7,000 times. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, it looks like it's light outside. I feel like oh, I missed something. Steven had put up a, a video of it a little while ago, and it was getting bright, so, so I'm sure it's fully bright now. About Three minutes left before we should switch yep. back to winch view. And then we'll right. stow the arm and I think slow I've been down. engrossed in the tutorial on the proper like arm plan. and also looking up some species that we saw down at the seafloor. Hey Steve, I'm gonna ask you for this twice. Uh, first time, can you please put winch alt, I think it's called, up on the top left screen? Roger. And then at some point I'm gonna hit the dive salvo and mess you up again. Gotcha. Thank you. Oh.
Oh, Annabelle, I wanted to ask you a quick question for all of the undergraduates out there that may be interested in studying like deep sea microbio and things and sort of how you ended up working with Beth. If you can talk about a little bit about oh, your sort of okay. process and uh, maybe how you took initiative or however you sort of got <laughs> into Beth Lab and okay. how that then got you I here. Do that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so I study interdisciplinary science at the new school. So that's my major. Mm -hmm. um, and that major is not focused on deep sea microbiology mm -hmm. or really microbiology at all. Mm -hmm. um, and so I I guess I completed two years um, in that program and I was a sophomore and so I was looking, I had kind of this background general, like a general background in, in biology. Mm -hmm. And so I was looking for summer internships and that's how I found the research experience for undergraduates funded through the National Science Foundation. Nice. Any undergrads, um, I think going to school in the US, mm -hmm. um, Look, definitely look up the REU website because there are so many opportunities on there. Okay. So I applied to a bunch of REUs um, and I got one with Beth. Uh, and so I that was actually the COVID summer, so the summer of 2020. So I worked remotely for her on a genomics project. Oh, nice. Um, on some deep sea bacteria and I loved it. Um, and so then I... Uh, okay. worked as an <laughs> RU intern in, in another you. lab the following Dang. summer mm -hmm. um, and then actually returned to Best Lab through a semester at Colby College. Um, these uh. are all kind of the random ways that I got <laughs> to go back to Best Lab. Um, no and then when this spot okay. opened up, um, she asked How if I wanted I to, to join and help her pull. with oh, nice. her data analysis. There. So my role okay. on the boat is... Um, Pure way. being in the van, uh, but then also sort of assisting her, in the yeah, lab. helping awesome. her crush some rocks and prep some samples and stuff like that. That's so nice. yeah, definitely look up the the REU program for summer internships. Trevor, do you want to take over the arm to put it away? Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're probably faster. Future wench. <laughs> I didn't know, but I now I know. Uh, do we want to track forward? Um, yeah, what the heck? We don't know what the surface current's doing at like 100 to 50 meters, so I think that would be a good call. Steve, I'm going to refire that salvo. It didn't take. Roger. There we go. Can you help me out with that top left again, please? Thank you. Wonderful. Do you like porch light on or off? Do you I care? Think off is fine. Okay. Oops. So for anyone just tuning in, we are at about 333 meters, so still coming up. Um, and I believe, I don't know, Stephen, when the vehicles sort of get towards the surface, do we usually put the cam on the surface so people can sort of see the vehicles coming out of the water? Is that usually a thing, or if not? Yeah, eventually. Uh, okay. Yep. When that happens, to see if maybe some pelagic fish will be sw swimming around like they do sometimes. Which camera did you have in mind? 
Um, uh, someone was just ask, asking about any camera angled surface, I guess, on the side where the white crane is, maybe, when they're getting pulled out. We have the uh, wire cam, which sometimes you can see sharks in. Ooh. But I'll throw that up yeah. and see what we got. There was the snap. Nice. Thank you. It's easier to see them at night, I feel like, when uh, oh, when the light the uh, lights are mm -hmm. yeah shining into the water. And then also for people wondering about the next dive. So after we recover at Atlanta and Hercules, um, it's anticipated, at least at this time, that it'll be about an eight hour transit to the next dive site at uh, Solidae Seamount and then hoping to launch around four o'clock, uh, 4 p.m. Hawaii time, which is the time zone we are recognizing here on board. Oh, thanks for that info, Shelby. I mm -hmm. didn't realize another yep. launch at four, so that means we'll get some more blue water time. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> if things go according to plan anyway. Right. Yeah. Get some more around the water cooler chatter. Yeah. <laughs> Got a lot to do between now and then. What was that last part? Yeah, Roger. Sure, please, yep. Oh, Steve, it looks like people were actually oh. talking about the Herc cam, I guess, angled up, main HD camera. I don't know. I guess we'll we see when we get to, like, 50 meters. There. What are those little critters? Huh. Yeah. Probably a squiggle. What do we do between dives? Uh, sleep. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> sleep, process samples, I guess, in this case. Yeah. <laughs> That'll have to happen. Uh, breakfast here on the ship starts at 7.30, so that is happening now. Um, so I'm sure people are already up there, and then uh, some of us, as we get ready to leave watch, will also try to grab a bite. Um, yeah, catch up on things for the Science Communication Fellow. Sometimes we just have to do other uh, ship to shore interactions where we're just talking to people all over the world about what's going on here and what we've been finding. Um, we sort and organize highlight pictures. So between working, sleeping, and eating, um, unless we have a longer transit, sometimes we get to kind of chill. Some people have been playing guitar and piano. Cribbage. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. When we got weathered out. This is going to be a quick turnaround for us on the science yeah. team with processing samples and then creating sample reports. Um, all of the information that we log during the dive and um, we timestamp each sample and that takes a 
snapshot basically of depth and salinity and oxygen and all of those different measurements uh, per sample and that has to be um, logged accordingly and then given to the scientists at the end of this crew so that they can use that data when they're processing their samples. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of reporting that goes mm -hmm. on on the <laughs> science team and a lot of subsampling and uh, post-processing of this data that we've collected. So yeah. It's going to be a little, little crunch. A little crunch. <laughs> going to be good. We're crunch. happy to be right. doing the dives and taking the samples. Right. So yeah, that's just a little bit about what our team will okay. be doing. It's it's always very fun to be in the lab uh, when an ROV comes up because you yeah. get to see all the corals I and the sea stars. There's still that, what is it, the bearded coral? What, yeah, what, the, we uh, what were we calling that? The fur beard sponge? Yeah, yeah. yeah. fur beard sponge. <laughs> Which hat is sponge. a little smelly. Yeah. Oh, is it starting to smell? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. I, it it yeah. has been smelling. Oh, it's she's not, like, not no, it was already <laughs> smelling. <laughs> so that's drying out. Uh, we hope. Yeah. Yeah. Is it just left out on the counter to dry, or is it covered in something, or is it like literally just on the counter with a label drying? Well, it is literally on the counter with a <laughs> label drying. That's only part of it, though. The oh, other part yeah. we did preserve with ethanol, so oh, that okay. will go for some like DNA analysis yeah. and things like that as well. So we, we did subsample okay. um, from the piece that we took. So, yeah. Yeah. That was from, what, two dives ago? Mm -hmm. That I think so now. Yeah, the really? first unnamed uh -huh. ridge, I think. Yes. That we uh, were exploring along. Fascinating. We were talking about how like dense it was. Yeah, the yeah. dense so ridge. That's adding to yeah. the slow dry. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Super dense. I think it was wigging out our, our Man, videographer, I gotta go, Steven. I gotta go see He's that like, sponge. it's so fleshy. <laughs> it's like bizarre. Still as big. At really? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Huge. That's gonna take it's a long massive. time to like. Yeah, I'm a little Don't worried about that. the smell <laughs> process during <laughs> the. Um, no, it's gonna it's gonna dry on time. <laughs> yeah. Any day now. <laughs> yeah. I know. I wish we had a little drying oven or something in the yeah. in the lab where you could put it on a low temp to kind toast it <laughs> just slightly crisp it up a little bit yeah. <laughs> um, in my experience those sponges can get pretty smelly mm. oh, while do I need to come down there with a mask yeah. <laughs> no not yet not yet I'll let you know when it's time <laughs> come come or maybe not <laughs> <laughs> just say hard no hard no but I do want to see it. Hard yes. I know. Yeah, it's really, really cool. I have. Uh, I want to see it. And some of the. Are yeah. some? Did we take a? Did we take a snip of the bubblegum coral? We did yes. take a snip of that. Um, and did I think we did sub samples because we got. Uh, well, what Shelby is referring to, just to fill everyone in, is we a couple nights ago, a huge conglomerate of a bubblegum coral uh, baskets stars mm -hmm. and snake, snake stars. stars. Mm -hmm. We also even had a little fish. I don't think we got any oh, fish, fish, but we took a little sample of that and uh, we did end up with some of the coral and some of the star. So we subsampled that and um, yeah, we'll send it back for analysis. There was a beautiful sea anemone that came up and it was huge, oh, bright uh, orange. Uh, it's still It's still down there. I just, yeah, I just categorized that picture the other night, and I got it when it was getting squeezed Ooh. and getting taken off. It was really cool. That's so cool. I got to come look at it all, take some cool pics. That's so cool. Well, what I'll do when when the ROV comes up is since Beth is interested in the outside, mm -hmm. um, the manganese crust, mm -hmm. uh, I go down there and her and I smash rocks. Uh -huh. So that's my job. I smash rocks and then put them in different tubes and in different temperatures. Um, but yeah, I have to get my arms ready for that. <laughs> so are you like smashing just like just enough to break it apart? Or do you really want like a ground sample? You're like really just going at it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. All your so frustrations <laughs> on the rock. Um, <laughs> yeah, so typically the rocks are pretty big. Um, and definitely they have much more material than we need. So we smash off little pieces first, mm -hmm. like probably clementine size maybe okay. orange size okay um off of these big rocks and then with those smaller pieces we we grate it down oh, into, okay. into very very fine pieces so there's a little bit of both yeah. gotcha
which is a little bit longer to go. Are we at just below 200 yep. meters? Yep. And we're at what, 25 meters? How fast were you going? Uh, it was just up here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> not very far. Okay. It showed, but now it's not. <laughs> I don't know. We're going quickly. We'll get up there soon. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's asking if a seamount discovered in 2016 was named after the ship. I don't know. I don't know. I tried to Google that. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if Ocean Exploration Trust ever like does that. I feel like the yeah. features are usually, um, you know, try to be named after something more characteristic or cultural, depending on where it is, stuff like that. So, yeah, I don't know if that probably happened. Someone also mentioned that they um, think we might have a high likelihood of seeing a mahi-mahi um, when we're coming up and I, on one of our first deployments. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I was like, they, they've been around yeah, for sure. Have. So maybe they'll grace us today. Uh, when we were putting Hercules in the water, um, I think maybe our first dive, uh -huh. uh, it was nighttime. And as soon as Herc went in the water, all the lights came on, and I was watching from above, and I could see a mahi mahi like chasing a little fish oh, around that's um, awesome. in the light. It was really cool. Ugh. It was really really cool. That's amazing. So maybe we'll be lucky. I know. If not, we have a bunch more dives. <laughs> yeah, we'll be <laughs> to here catch again it. in eight hours. <laughs> we'll be back real soon. Data logging going well? What's that? Data logging going well? Yeah, I was just uh, <laughs> relaying some information to the science manager, and uh, she's going to go down and uh, get some boxes and um, bags and various sampling equipment ready for taking things from the ROV mm -hmm. and then bringing them back into the lab. And we were talking through what, how and what needs to be processed gotcha. and, in, and in what way. So, yeah, a little little discussion there on the side, but I'm excited. I think the caffeine's finally kicking in, too. <laughs> so we're going to go in the lab and uh, look at these samples, do some processing. I like that, the hands-on stuff. Mm -hmm. Brr. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody loves a touch tank, right? This everybody, that's what, everybody like, loves a touch here tank. Shortly, it's like we get to like <laughs> touch and feel and see and smell. Well, okay, smelling. maybe we don't want to smell. smell. <laughs> all right, smell. all right, fine. Going back to the not, sponge. Not discussion. right before breakfast. Hard no. Or right after <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> Come on. Next dive is planned in eight hours, I believe. Yep. All things. That is the rumor. Constant. <laughs> yep. Um, going back to the, when we were talking about the bubblegum coral that we saw on the unnamed north dive a couple of days ago, mm -hmm. there is a highlight video clip of that up. Oh, what? It is on oh, Nautilus Live. Yeah. So if people are 
interested in why we keep bringing that up as one of our favorite. You can see oh, why. Fantastic. Um, so if you just go to nautiluslive.org and just scroll to the bottom, some of the highlight videos are up and the bubblegum coral, basket stars, um, and other wild diversity near Papahanaumokuakea National Marine Monument. That's the entire uh, title of the video. It's up under recent highlights. So have what? fun. That yes. That makes fantastic. me so happy. <laughs> Can't wait to watch that on repeat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I was there for that. Yeah. Like a yeah. year. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I thought it was a highlight. It's nice to know that other people also feel like that was a, a highlight. Yeah. Um, having never been on the Nautilus before and never worked with an ROV, it was certainly amazing to see on cam and... Uh, the animal or the animals, I guess I should say, interacting live. Incredible, just yeah. incredible. Shelby, is that something we could um, show classrooms and things like that eventually, uh, like on some of our interactions or? Most likely, okay. I'm assuming we could, I'm not even assuming, I'm sure we could get access to the video if not just have it pulled up and then I can just always uh, put it on the proper screen if we have YouTube pulled up so either way most likely okay. all right just checking uh, folks are really appreciating the impromptu ROV training sesh between <laughs> Trevor and Ashton I am too <laughs> you know someday someday when I'm Backing a trailer into a trailer, <laughs> a trailer with a trailer. Um, I'm going to know how to do that. It makes me want to watch them do like the claw game. At, I know. You know at the oh. at, like arcades. <laughs> yeah, but there are so few joints on that thing. It's like what? Yeah, just they probably wouldn't have enough. Seriously. Two. <laughs> Like two or Will three. they always get the the prized stuffed animal? Is that what you're? I, you're see, asking? I feel well, like I those are know. rigged so that you don't yeah, get right? them. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because they want you to keep putting money in yeah. the machine. But maybe they they would beat it. <laughs> I don't right, know. Right, right. <laughs> I'm holding out hope that someone can beat that game. <laughs> if anyone can, it's them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My money is on those folks for sure. I appreciate that. Yeah, I uh, yeah. recently won a little stuffy in a claw game, so. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you did. Well, there you go. I have strategies now. Fantastic. New strategies. Good to know. <laughs> Dog toys. <laughs> Got to do the it boop. for the pup. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get any pup dates today, did we? No pup no. dates. Just science. <laughs> Lots of good oh, science. science. Lots of really Just good science. Just science. No puppy. Just, okay. <laughs> Lots of good science. And a shout out to our scientists ashore for being up uh, on a Saturday on a morning. Saturday? Is it Saturday morning it, back it, it, in the no world? Idea. I don't it's, know. It's, it's, it's Saturday. It's all the same day out yeah, here. It's on the, the weekend. Ship. It's all. It's, uh, <laughs> but thank you, scientists ashore, for uh, all of the IDs and for... Uh, yeah, just following along with us and, and helping us out in uh, what we're seeing and, and doing. It's incredible to have that information that we can pass along to our audience and uh, also log for the science. Okay. Oh, of course. Please do. You're going to be in the lab. Yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So again, it is close to breakfast time here on the ship. We've got about 80 meters of uh, cable left um, before Herc and Atalanta come back on board. Yep. And then we will be taking the samples from the ROV. Um, we believe it's Saturday. Is it Saturday? <laughs> I'm in pretty the world? sure it's Saturday in okay, the world. Great. <laughs> I'm pretty so thanks sure. to all of the viewers who are watching at home on a Saturday. Yes. Uh, and then when we get to 50 meters, we're at about 75 now, uh, the pilots will hand the controls over to the folks on deck. Oh, dark. Kind of peering through the blue there, like looking for Anything we might see here I in the know. <laughs> surface waters. Hopefully something. 
there was a, a mahi mahi mm -hmm. that was um, kind of swimming around Hurricane okay. Atlanta a couple dives ago, three, four days ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we were coming up to the surface, we're talking about like the last 10 feet of water. <laughs> but yeah, so we're a little ways from that yet, but yeah. still might see something. Might. If not, we have a bunch of dives to go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lots of, oh, it's all sparkly in the water. Oh, somebody said it's 3.45 in the morning on Sunday in Australia. Ah, okay, thank you. <laughs> yep, yep. So, so not Saturday. Not Saturday anymore. In the world. Never mind. You guys have already moved on. Uh, thank you for being up very late <laughs> or early on a Sunday. There was a little fish. <laughs> Saw something go by. Twelve. All right. It's always so interesting, like how much, like you said, just in those last like fifty f meters or less of uh, water, like how much life can be in the water column, just like in that small. Yeah. And then like you just see nothing for like hundreds of meters, and then you get to the bottom and this stuff. Like, yeah, and then there's the striation so much is always down there. so yeah. Yeah. So interesting in the water it's column. It's really fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our water temperature is a way up from where we were at the bottom. Mm. The bottom it is was about 1.8 C, so somewhere Cold. about 35 <laughs> right. Fahrenheit. If you use those units, if those are more familiar to you, and now we're up at like what 17 something like that, 18. I think so. I can't wait. Is it degrees? Temperature on here? Mm -hmm. So, a lot of variation in water temperature. control van. Um, oxygen. Ed greatly enhanced you know, that 50 meters at this are we okay to recover so yes okay here in the control well. van Those are control van is good to recover also. bridge main deck radio check 11 clear mark okay to recover please stand by for the captain one moment yep, so we are understood call us back when you're ready currently Roger. so the deck uh deck crew be taking control of the winch. All stations, this is the bridge. Go ahead. Yep, oh, okay, bridges, bridges go for recovery. Okay, coming up. If you all are still watching live, our back deck crew is getting ready to recover the vehicles, Atalanta and Hercules, getting the crane ready, getting the A-frame, tag lines, etc., for recovery. And we still have a crew up here in the command center in the vans, 
Yep. So two crews of people essentially to get the vehicles back on board safely and efficiently. How long were we on bottom this dive? Did we say like 10? Let's see, 10 our hours? dive started at 8 p.m., right? No, 6. Did we dive at 6? Did we dive at start 6? Start launching at oh, 6. Oh, we started at 6. You're right. Yes, yes. We started at you know, like I don't six. have any of my uh, <laughs> sample notes in front of me anymore. No, I'm trying to like down <laughs> to the lab, so I can look that up. 6 with... Should have been a 14 hour dive, I think. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So, probably on bottom for 10 hours. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. About two hours coming up. Yeah. Two hours going down, something yep. like that. about 10 meters of depth here. Oh, almost there. See that the bridge, this is Nav. Much nav later. bridge. Please reduce thrust to 25%. 25% on, on the jet pump. Roger that. Fifteen to twenty feet of water. You can see the stern of Nautilus there from the Argus cam. Yep. Atalanta yep, being retrieved here right go. now, coming up onto deck. You can even this see some of Mark. our crew there. <laughs> and we are... Looks like we're getting Atalanta yep, secured getting Atalanta onto the out. back deck. Post a status update. means Hercules is not far behind. Yep. Bridge, nav. That's right. At nav, bridge. Please hold position. That, hold position.
can see Hercules back there trailing just aft of the stern. Steven, people are wondering if you can close the iris a bit. I don't know what that is. <laughs> See, we're bringing Hercules alongside, getting ready to pick it up. Yep, with the crane should be out any minute. Next dive is hopefully slated to be um, about an eight hour transit from where we are now. Hoping to launch at four Hawaii time, Hawaii standard time. All things, all things good. Copy that. Herc 
right there yep. on the port side yep. being recovered Her right now. Yep. Breaking the surface now. Coming on out. High voltage secure. All right. Thanks, All everybody, right, for tuning in with us. And I hope everybody has a great weekend. And we'll see you on the next dive. Hopefully. Team <laughs> Hard No signing out. Right. See you for the next dive. <laughs> Is that okay, the vehicle's on deck? In parentheses, Paragorgeous. Well, <laughs> Copy that. All right. Have a good one, Copy everybody. Uh, Captain, going off radio comms now.